Where is DMT found in nature? Um, well, a better question would be where is, where is it not found in nature? Um, I mean, this is, this is really interesting to me. The fact that DMT is so ubiquitous in nature. Um, and it, it's, it's part, it, it, is, it is, from the chemical standpoint, structurally, it's the simplest of the psychedelics. It's a very, very simple compound. And, and in terms of biochemistry, it's only two steps away from tryptophan. Tryptophan is an amino acid. It's one of the essential amino acids. So it is universal. All living things have tryptophan. Uh, now, not all living things have DMT, probably, but but the enzymes that convert tryptophan to DMT, there are two main enzymes in this process, are also universal. I mean, I don't know how chemical we want to get here, but the basic idea is that there's an enzyme that takes off the acid group of the amino acid, so it turns it from an amino acid into an amine, and then there's another uh, enzyme that puts uh, methyl groups onto the amine. So you get, first you get tryptophan, and then you get tryptamine, and then you get dimethyl tryptamine, which is what DMT is. And this goes on, I think, very commonly. Uh, well, these enzymes are certainly common. I mean, they're common in all cells, practically. Do all organisms contain DMT? I think it's possible that all organisms might contain traces of DMT. There are many plants that contain DMT. We know of at least a couple hundred, and that's only because we've looked. You know, there are probably thousands of plants. There, are, in fact, my suspicion is that because tryptophan is so easily converted to DMT, I think if you went out with a sufficiently sensitive instrument, mass spectrometer or whatever, and just started sampling plants at random and shoving those through your gas chromatograph or whatever you're using, you would find traces of DMT in every plant. And you would also find it, we know it's very widespread in animals too, so we know it's in amphibians, we know it's in mammals, including us, we know it's in marine organisms, we know it's in fish, so it's, yeah, it's, it's odd that, well, maybe it's not odd, it's just a fact of nature that it's all over the place. And, and probably is about as close to being universal as, as anything is. If we change the nature, you know, we have the model and we have the real world out here and we have the sensory neural interface that's taking this information in, interpreting it, and giving us the model. If we change the nature of the sensory neural interface, a, a little or a lot, if we substitute, say, DMT for serotonin, you know, the model of the world that we get changes radically. And who's to say that that's any less valid than the model that, you know, the brain constructs for, uh, you know, for everyday purposes. So this idea that, you know, I mean, it's, it's all illusion, it's all hallucination. That's what experience is, you know. I mean, that's why, in some ways, I sometimes get a little impatient with, with people that say, you know, well, a drug experience cannot possibly have any spiritual validity. Well, I'm here to tell you that all experience is a drug experience, you know. We're all on drugs all the time largely because we're made of drugs, you know, and that's what drives us, you know. Experience is, you know, sort of the, the what issues out of this biochemical process of, you know, all these neurotransmitters and hormones moving around our brain. I mean, it's drugs. The ubiquity of DMT is, a, is a, you know, 
signature of consciousness in nature or nature sending a, a message to you know the, the big brain stupid primates you know wake up look around it's everywhere you know mind is everywhere